Hey guys, how's it going? I hope you're having a wonderful week. Like always, I'm continuing with my Britney Spears discography journey, and we made it to her ninth studio album from 2016, four years ago, called Glory. Now, I will be listening to the deluxe edition of Glory, and there are 17 tracks. Not only are there 17 tracks, but there's also a bonus track called Mood Ring that she added to the album earlier this year. On May 29th, she added Mood Ring due to popular demand. And not only did she add Mood Ring to the album, she completely changed the album artwork. And let me tell you, it is fire. That should have been the original album artwork. I love it so much. She's laid on the ground, in the sand, in the desert somewhere, and there's this huge, thick chain wrapped around her body. It's so seductive. It's so sexy. I love it so much. So we do have a lot of songs to listen to in this video. 18 songs, one hour and one minute. So this is definitely the longest Britney album I've listened to thus far on my Britney Spears journey. So enough talking. Let's jump right into the album with track number one, Invitation. <laughs> Okay, and that was track number one, Invitation. And I didn't say at the beginning of this video, but of course I've listened to this album already back when it was released in 2016. I haven't listened to it in a couple years, so I do forget what a lot of these songs sound like. This one, however, Invitation, I remember it all too well because it's a great song. It's a great opener. It's very, it's very dreamy. I don't know about you, but it's very... I can't really pinpoint it. It just really puts me in a euphoric sense of mind. I feel like this track, track number one, Invitation, is better than the entirety of Britney Jean. Britney Jean already set the bar quite low, so anything would be better than Britney Jean, and this track does the trick. And what I also like is that Britney Spears co-wrote this song. I don't know how many songs on this album she co-wrote, but she co-wrote this one, and it's always nice to see that. So now we're gonna move on to track number two, Make Me, featuring g Easy. <laughs> I have the sun urge to start stripping, and I don't know why. Definitely. I mean, I don't need to tell you. Aha! Uh -huh. And Stevie Song from Britney Spears, Make Me. I always enjoyed this song, but I first heard it when it was released back in 2016. I loved it, and I still love it to this day. This was also my very first time being exposed to g Easy, And let me tell you, after listening to this song, I was obsessed with g Easy. I probably listened to his music for a good year after listening to this song. I checked out all his albums, all his singles, all his tracks, and I was a little g Easy obsessed. I think this is a great single from the album. It's a great lead single, and from my understanding, Originally, there was supposed to be a different music video for this song. She filmed the music video, but it was considered too sexy or whatever. I don't know the whole story. So they reshot the music video. And the music video we have now that you can see on YouTube is the second version of the music video. It does say here that the original music video was shot by David LaChapelle. 
And there are scenes from the music video that include men hanging off poles next to leopards and spears buried all with nothing but sparkly body paint inside a cage. However, RCA Records ultimately opted to support a final Tamer music video, which was filmed later on. Which is really unfortunate. There are leaks, apparently, of the original music video. Britney Spears make me original music video. Okay, so there are... Oh. You know what I'm thinking? I'm thinking they should release this music video. Just like how they released Mood Ring to be included on Glory back in May of this year, they should include the original first music video for Make Me. But now let's move on to track number three, Private Show. <laughs> Okay, and that was track number three, Private Show, and this song is so much fun. Those lyrics, and um, I remember back in the day not being the biggest fan of this song. I would always make fun of it. Um, I just, I never thought this was a good Britney Spears song. It was always one of my least favorites on the album. Fast forward four years later, now in 2020, I like it a bit more. It's very humorous, and... From my understanding, it was used to promote her fragrance at the time called Private Show. Private Show, Britney Spears, the new fragrance. It's your private show, hashtag take a bow. So because this was never one of my favorite tracks on the album, I don't think I've ever listened to it in full up until now. This was my very first time listening to it till the very end. And I didn't know at the very end of the song, she says, tasting on my apple pie, Apple pie, satisfy. I had no idea. Work it, work it, boy, watch me work it. Slide down my pole, watch me spin it and twerk it. <laughs> it sounds like a song that could have been on her circus album. It's very, um, I don't know, it has that circus aesthetic to it. And Britney also co-wrote Private Show, and she also co-wrote Make Me alongside Invitation. So she did co-write the first three tracks off this album. So now we'll move on to track number four, Mad on the Moon. <laughs> Okay, and that was track number four, Mad on the Moon, and this is a great song. I almost wish this was released as a single. I feel like they could have put out a really creative and fun music video for this song. I don't know about you, but four tracks in, and I'm loving the lyrics on this album. They're a lot of fun to read, and they're just great pop songs. I almost want to cry because this album is so much better than Britney Jean. <sighs> It's also a very sexy album so far. I'm just having the urge to strip and take my clothes off. And I don't know why. I don't know why. Britney Spears just brings out my inner stripper. So now let's move on to track number... So now let's move on to track number five, Just Love Me. Sexy, sexy. 
sexy, sexy, sexy. This album is so sexy. Oh my god. I'm 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 very thirsty right now. <laughs> this is such a hot album with bops galore, singles galore. There's so much singles potential on this album. So much wasted single potential because there were only two singles released off of this album, Make Me and Slumber Party. I always loved listening to this song just because it's a sexy song. Hot, smoldering. I'm gonna, I'm gonna be finishing this spritzer bottle by the end of this video. Not even the end of this video. I mean, I'm gonna probably finish the rest of this within the next two seconds. What I also love about this album is the production. It's fire, it's A+, and it's so calming and euphoric. It feels like at times you're just floating in the clouds. It kind of just whisks you away. Compared to Britney Jean, which just gave you a seizure track after track. But anyway, we will now move on to track number... Track number six, Clumsy. Clumsy, but I love how you go down. Boom, boom, bring me into you. Thinking all over this bedroom. Oh, Banging all over the bedroom. <sighs> I'm I'm about to have a pop heart attack. It's just pure pop perfection overload right now. I can't handle it. My body can't handle it. I, I don't know what to do with myself. It's too much. It's just too much pop perfection. The lyrics on this album are just so much fun to read. They're sexy and fun at the same time because I be slipping out of this address, fooling around, and then we smash again and again. And then she keeps repeating, banging all over this bedroom, banging all over this bedroom again and again and again. Oops. So now let's move on to track number seven. Do you want to come over? And that was, do you want to come over? Yes. Yes, Britney, I do want to come over. <laughs> Could you imagine being invited over to Britney Spears' home, getting a text message, and it's like, hey, it's Britney, want to come over? So let's play a little game. If you got a text message and it was Britney Spears asking you to come over, what would you bring as a gift? to her house. If you only had two hours to find something, if you lived in the area, let's say you lived in the area and you lived close to Brittany and you only had two hours to find a gift to bring to her house, what would you get her? And what would I get her? I honestly have no idea. I don't know what she likes. I don't know what she doesn't like. So I would probably play it safe and just get her a dozen roses. You can't go wrong with a dozen roses. And hey, if someone gave me a dozen roses, I would be ecstatic. I would be over the moon because the rose is my favorite flower. This is just such a fun song. I always like listening to it. It puts you in such a good mood. It's great. Just like the rest of the album, this is a great pop song. So now let's move on to track number eight, Slumber Party, featuring Tadashi.
Alrighty, that was track number eight, Slumber Party, and this was a great song. I'm happy that they chose this song as the second single. I'm just a little disappointed the song didn't do better commercially, but the music video for this song is great to watch. It's very beautiful. I am quite disappointed because this song only peaked at number 86 on the Billboard Hot 100. And from what I remember, Tanashi wasn't originally on this song. When I first listened to the album when it was released, it was just Britney Spears on the track. And then once the music video came out with Tadashi, that's when they added Tadashi to the song on the album. So for those of you who didn't like Slumber Party as the second single, which song off this album would you have picked as the second single? So now let's move on to track number nine, Just Like Me. Already, and that was track number nine, Just Like Me. And I remember this song always being one of my favorites from the album. It looks like this song is about infidelity. She's getting dressed up, got those heels on that you love, and she's driving to his place, warming up my tongue, hearts beating fast. When I'm turning the key, I see you on your back, and I just can't believe she looks just like me. It definitely is a really creepy situation, not just catching your significant other cheat on you, but they're cheating on you with someone who looks exactly like you. It's very weird. Just Like Me is definitely one of the more darker songs on the album. But anyway, we will now move on to track number 10, Love Me Down. Okay, and that was track number 10, Love Me Down, and I was never the biggest fan of this song. I always found the chorus to be a little annoyed. It reminds me of a song that would have been on her Britney Jean album. I mean, I would listen to this song again. I suppose it just wouldn't be one of my go-to tracks on Glory. But what I like is that the song is continuing with the sexy theme of the album. I mean, this album just reeks of sex and... A hot, steamy nights with your boyfriend or girlfriend or whoever you're dating. I see who you are with the lights out. We're better just skin to skin. I'm treating you real, real nice now. We'll finish and start again. I also want to go back to Do You Want to Come Over for just a second because I forgot to mention that Do You Want to Come Over reminds me of her In the Zone era. I don't know if I'm the only one, but when I was listening to that song, it was taking me back to in the Zone, and just the aesthetic of that album, and it sounds like a song that could have been on her In the Zone album. So now we'll move on to track number 11, Hard to Forget Ya. Alrighty, and that was track number 11, Hard To Forget Ya, and this was another a great song. It was a lot of fun to dance to. As you just saw, I was bouncing up and down on my yoga ball. I honestly don't have much to say about this song other than it's just a solid, it's just a solid classic pop song. So we will now move on to track number 12, What You Need. Mm. 
Okay, and that was what you need, and this was a lot of fun. Definitely the most experimental song on the album. She sounds great on this song, and that's why I enjoy it so much. Her vocals are in the forefront, and the production as well. It was a little jazz-inspired as well, which I really enjoy. Just the production and her voice, just the song overall is, to me, one of the highlights on the album because it sounds so different. You could tell that Britney had a lot of fun recording this song. So we will now move on to track number 13, Better. Okay, and that was better, and this was another solid track on the album. It's not one of my favorites. There's just so many great songs on this album. There's so many. There's 17, and this one I feel like might pale in comparison to a lot of the others, but the production is really nice on this song. Better was just never one of my favorite songs on the album. It was never really a song I listened to. And on this album, she does sing about being intimate with someone quite a bit. Sexy, steamy nights, all that jazz. It is a hot album, but I wish she would play around with other themes as well. It was fun in the beginning of the album, but now it's kind of getting stale and old. I just wish she would play around with other themes, other than being intimate, being sexy. But anyway, let's move on to track number 14, Change Your Mind, No Seas, Cortez. No, Alrighty, and that was Change Your Mind, No Seas, Cortez. This was another one of my favorite tracks on the album. Back in the day when this album first came out, I always found it quite interesting. And what I also love about this album is that, yes, it's quite long. There are 17 tracks, 18 tracks with Mood Ring, but it doesn't seem bloated. It doesn't seem long. You don't really get tired because each song is so good. Each song is a bop. This is just a great pop album, so that's why it doesn't feel like a chore to listen to. You don't get exhausted. So we will now move on to track number 15, Liar. Okay, and that was Liar, track number 15. I'm writing out good things to say. What else is there to say about these songs? It's a great song. It's a great pop song. It's a bop. It's fantastic. It's wonderful. It's catchy. It made me dance. Blah, blah, blah. You heard it all already. I don't know if I'm the only one, but this sounds like a song that Britney could have released a long time ago during her Oops, I Did It Again era or... Maybe her Britney era. I don't know, it sounds like... It sounds like an old school Britney song. And I don't know if that's the intention. Like I said, I don't know if I'm the only one who feels this way. But there are songs on this album that take me back to Britney Jean, Femme Fatale, Circus. 
and in the zone and her earlier albums like oops i did it again maybe even blackout so i don't know if that was the intention but i feel like all of her eras are rolled into one on this album and it's almost like a throwback album in my opinion even though some of the songs on this album remind me of her past eras the album still sounds very modern and fresh and new, even in 2020. So we still have like, three more tracks left on the album. Let's move on to track number 17, 16. I lost count at this point. Whatever number it is, let's move on to If I'm Dancing. <laughs> Okay, and that was If I'm Dancing. This was always one of my favorite tracks on the album. It was very strange. This song is very hypnotic. It almost put me in a trance. I don't know if you guys know this, but there were times where I just forgot I was recording and I was in my own little world and it was very strange. What I also did know about this song up until now is that it is also co-written by Chantel Kriviasek, who is a Canadian singer-songwriter. So let's move on to track number 17, Coupier Electric. <laughs> Okay, and that was Coupé Electric. I love saying that. I forgot how much I love this song. Am I crazy for saying that this is one of my favorite tracks on the album? It's so different from what we're used to in a Britney Spears song. There are a few songs on this album that aren't your typical Britney Spears songs, and that's why I love this album so much. One of the reasons is because this album is a little bit experimental, and this song... I really, really like. Even though I don't know what she's singing about, it's all in French, which I should be able to read because I live in Canada, but I don't know French really, so unfortunately I can't really translate the lyrics. I'll have to look up the actual translation for myself. But we have come to the end of the album, track number 18. Now this is a song I've never heard before. Mood Ring by Demand. Let's get into it. Okay, that was the final track, track number 18, Moon Ring, and I really enjoyed it. It fits in with the rest of the album really nicely, and I love the atmosphere that this song creates. It's very dreamy, just like some other songs off this album. It's very euphoric, and it's very pleasant. It's a great pop song, and I enjoyed it. This just makes me wonder how many Britney Spears songs there are, how many unreleased Britney Spears songs there are locked away in some sort of dusty crypt that need to be released to the public, just like Mariah Carey's doing with her Rarities collection, her album that she's putting out this year. Britney Spears needs to put out an album of rarities, of songs we've never heard before that are locked away in the vault somewhere. Hopefully Mariah Carey has started a trend where artists will start doing that. They'll start putting out albums of unreleased songs. But anyway, that is all 18 tracks of glory. And what is there to say 
what is there to say that I haven't already about this album? It's great. It's a great pop album from Britney Spears. I feel like this is one of her best albums. And each song on here, even the songs I'm a little indifferent to, each song is still really great. One great bop after another. So much single potential on this album. It's such a tragedy that only two singles were released from this album. And I said this already, but even though there are 18 tracks, the album doesn't feel bloated at all because you're having such a good time and each song is so good that... It's not exhausting to listen to. This album isn't draining. You're not wishing for it to be over. It's just one great song after another. The production is A+. It sounds very new and current and fresh. And I love the songwriting. She co-wrote quite a few of the songs. And I really enjoyed reading the lyrics. My only complaint is that I wish she would have played around with other themes and stories on the album. Like I said already, she does sing about intimacy and sex and having a good time, body the body, being sexy with your significant other and hooking up and all that jazz. She sings about that quite a bit on this album. I just wish she would have played around with other things other than that. What I also like about this album is that she experiments with her sound a bit more on this album. So you hear songs on this album you would typically hear from a Britney Spears album. Out of the three albums she's released during the 2010s, um, Femme Fatale and Britney Jean and now Glory, Glory is probably my number one and then followed by Femme Fatale and then Britney Jean. <laughs> now some people are saying that this could be perhaps Britney Spears' last album, which I don't want to say, but given her current circumstance and we don't really know what's happening in her life, her future is very shaky at the moment, so could this be her last studio album? I don't want to say it, I don't want to think it, but if it is, if it unfortunately is her last album, then she went out on a high note because Glory is a great pop album. So what did you guys think of the album? Maybe you don't love this album as much as I do. Tell me why in the comments. I will also ask you, what do you want from Britney on her next album? If she is to release an album in the next few years, what sounds do you want her to play around with? What do you want from Britney next on her next album. I will also point out her voice on this album. Her voice sounds great on a lot of these songs. And I know I don't comment a lot on her voice in these videos. Unfortunately, I always forget to, but she does sound great on a lot of these songs. And I know there's autotune and the vocoder and all that jazz, but she still sounds great regardless. And I think that's all I wanted to say on the album. I said everything I wanted to. Great album, two thumbs up, A+. 10 stars out of 10 stars, a great solid pop album. So in my next Britney Spears video, we'll be moving on to the compilation playlist. This is a playlist I created of songs she released on her Greatest Hits albums and bonus tracks and b-sides. And some songs I haven't heard yet, so that's going to be an exciting video. And then after I'm done that compilation video, we'll be moving on to the final video of this Britney Spears discography journey, which is Blackout. Originally, Glory was supposed to be the last video in this series, but I decided, you know what, I'm going to make Blackout the final video. So officially, I think that's all I wanted to say, so thanks for watching, guys. You can find me on Instagram, you can find me on Twitter, you can message me, you can tell me other artists I should check out. I'm open to any artists from any decade. You can find me on Apple Music, you can check out my playlists and so on and so forth so thanks for watching and i will see you next time take care